Hello everybody, this is Tony Turner and welcome to the Market Now as of about 11 a.m. Eastern on Friday, December the 9th. U.S. stocks opened higher today, extending a post-election rally with gains in healthcare and technology sectors lifting the NASDAQ and the S&P 500 to fresh all-time highs, and I should say yet again today. The Trump rally has been running since the November 8th vote as investors bet that President-elect Donald Trump's policies will boost economic growth and inflation. The three main U.S. indexes closed at record levels for the second day in a row on Thursday, while small-cap Russell 2000 and the Dow Jones Transport hit all-time highs. A wave of recent robust economic data has added to the upbeat mood, including monthly hiring numbers, GDP growth, and inflation, all of which have suggested strength in the U.S. economy. So on that cheerful note, let's look forward to three charts that could give us some insight into the week to come. First of all, as we usually do, we're going to look at a chart of our S&P 500 spider, symbol SPY. This is the exchange-traded fund that closely follows our S&P 500 benchmark index. And if you, if you want to see approximately where the S&P 500 itself is trading, all you need do here is move the, uh, the decimal point to the right one. In this case, when I captured this chart, the SPY was trading at $225.90. If you would move the decimal point to the right, just past the nine again, um, you would you would then you could assume that the S and P 500 index itself is trading at right around to 22.59. Okay, so we see here that the SPY is trading at quite a high premium to its 20-day moving average, the red light on this screen, certainly to quite a quite a high premium to its 50-day moving average, which is the green line on this screen, and certainly above its 200-day moving average, which is the black line. We also see that the 14-day RSI, which is an overbought, oversold indicator on our charts here, the 14-day RSI is once again over the 70 line. Now, the 70 line on the RSI, when when, when uh, the RSI itself moves above that level, the 70 level, then whatever you're measuring is considered to be overbought. Or in the case of the RSI, it's saying, hey, too many people own this right now. It's due for a pullback at some point. On the flip side of that, if we were to see, of course, it hasn't happened quite some time, if we were to see the SPY or another asset trading below the 30 level on the RSI, then we could say it's oversold and could be right for a reversal to the upside. Uh, so at any rate, we know that the, R, that the SPY is overbought here. It's stretched high. The, the rubber band is stretched high. It's up in nosebleed territory. It certainly has been fun. It would be great if this keeps on going. Uh, I don't know how much higher it can go. I'm looking here at the strong day we had on Wednesday. Then, of course, you get, and this is very, very typical of these kinds of patterns, then you get narrower and narrower days on the days following as, um, as, 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 as buyers cannot push this any higher in the second two days. We've already had quite a move here. So... Are we expecting a pullback here or at least a slight retracement? Sure. What day it's going to happen? I don't know. Why will it happen? Because <clears throat> traders like ourselves like to take profits. So do investors. If there's any, any news at all that comes in that's negative, it will be a great reason for a lot of people to say, aha, that's it. I'm going to take profits here. And, and it's a healthy thing. Markets can't go higher unless they go lower first, at least a little bit. So we'll be watching the SPY here. Again, it's at $225.90. We'll see just how much higher it could move over the coming week. Now, we do want to remember that next week on December Wednesday, December 14th, we do have the FOMC rate decision. 
Uh, how it will affect the markets, I don't know, but it will be interesting to see. And we do have to keep that in mind. That is a very important day. Okay, so the SPY here has, has support here at about, uh, about 200, well, let's see, up here at about 222 on this support line here, potential support, again, just under 220. Uh, and certainly right along the 218 zone or 2180 on the S&P 500 itself. So there's a lot of potential support here, a lot of potential buyers should the SPY start heading south in a profit-taking move. Now let's go on to our chart of the PowerShares QQQ. As you all know, this is the exchange-traded fund that closely follows our NASDAQ 100 index. NASDAQ 100 consists of the top 100 non-financial stocks in the NASDAQ stock market. Now, when we talked last week, the QQQ had come back down here uh, to uh, just a little over $115. And when we talked, it was down here at these lows, these, these recent lows. From there, and I said it could rally. We'd have to watch the big guys like Amazon, like Netflix, like Facebook, Intel, Microsoft, Apple. Uh, since then, some of those stocks have started to rally. And today, the QQQ is trading back at the high of this range, this range that it's been locked in for quite some time between about 114 and about 119.50. Today, when I captured this chart, the Qs were trading at 119.48, mostly on the back of Apple, which is strongly higher today. So we're back up at the highs of this range. Now, our question here is, do the Qs, do these big high-tech momentum stocks, do they have the power now, do they have the buyers, which is what it comes down to, to move up and above this 119.50 range, back up to, say, 120. 120.50 is the all-time high on the Qs back in March of the year 2000. So do the Qs, do the big tech stocks have the power here to break out of this range and move higher going into the first of the year? Or once again, do they have to take succumb to a little profit-taking? We know that we have the Fed announcement on Wednesday. We also know that in January, we'll be moving into fourth quarter earnings season. So a lot going on here. We got our Santa rally I talked about. Boy, this has been one heck of a rally, so we can't complain there. Now let's look and see if the Qs can break out. We do have this, this, short, this short trend line here. If we draw it under the lows, it comes up to 116. So if you want, you can raise your range. Uh, support here to 115, 116 for the Qs because if they move back down to below that zone, then maybe they need to go lower. All right, with that, let's move on to our final chart for the day. We're going to look today at the Select Sector Consumer Staples Exchange Traded Fund, Simple XLP. Now, I've noted today going over uh, sector ETFs that healthcare does look good, although it still looks a little shaky to me looking at, uh, 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 looking at uh, equipment and looking at the pharmas, and that may be somewhere you'd like to look right now. This particular chart of the Select Sector Consumer Staples ETF, the XLP, has also sold off. It looks like it has a little better chart formation to me. And although, of course, you're, you're um, welcome to watch all of them, this is the one I've chosen for us to look at today. In the XLP, the top components are Procter & Gamble, Coca-Cola, uh, Philip Morris, Walmart, CVS, Costco, stocks like that. And um, we can see here that definitely consumer staples, since their July high back at 5602 this year, have definitely sold off. A lot of this has to do with, with investors knowing that uh, we have a high chance of getting an interest rate hike. And bond-like stocks, meaning stocks that pay, companies that pay strong dividends, usually sell off in, as we anticipate a rate hike. And of course, that includes utilities, 
Uh, telecom rallied recently. We caught that one last week. Uh, and um, the stocks that pay pretty decent dividends, again, usually sell off. And the XLP has been one of those industry groups. Now, as we look at the XLP here, when I captured this chart today, it was trading at $51.79. As you can see, it is beneath the 200-day moving average, but that's a, uh, quite a premium to where we are now. It's not to worry about. And it's the 200-day uh, moving average is horizontal, was rising slightly, so not worried about that yet. What I see is the 50-day moving average coming down overhead here. That can be pretty strong resistance. What I'd like to see is the XLP move up and close above the 50-day moving average for at least three days here. I also want to say that I, if, if the ma market in, gets some um, profit taking next week, I would suspect that the XLP could pull back toward the 20-day moving average or back toward 51, perhaps offering yet a better opportunity than right now for entering it. So I'm going to watch it here. What I do want to say is if the XLP falls below $50, I am no longer interested. And if I entered the XLP and it up, up higher over 50 and it were to fall below 50, I would exit the position. So this we could almost call a bottom fishing play here. If the XLP can break above the 50-day moving average, which is pretty nicely drawn, a downward trend line for the XLP, if it can break above it here because these stocks have gotten pretty oversold, uh, and as I said, if it can move up and close three days above it, then it's something I might look into uh, purchasing. I also might look into it if it moves back toward 51 and then rallies again and shows that there are buyers here. Then I will look at it favorably as well. And my line in the sand here is if it goes below 50, I'm out. So it's something you might want to keep an eye on on the weeks to come. Now we'll go on to next week's economic reports. But first, please join us on Monday, December 5th, this coming Monday, for our next session of Tony's Market Club. We'll talk about which side of the market to trade, have a mini trading lesson, and I'll give you stocks and ETFs that may become ripe for high potential trades. And just a note, as you can imagine, our stocks have done very, very well lately. We have raked in some really good profits. This is a low-priced, high-value opportunity to learn more about the market, become a smarter trader, and make more money. So please join us. If you can't attend our live session, no problem. The recording of our session is available to all of our members just a couple of minutes after the session ends. And now for the coming week's economic reports, not much going on Monday and Tuesday. On Wednesday, we have, that's the most important day this coming week, is Wednesday, we have PPI, Producer Price Index, Retail Sales, Crude Inventories, and the all-important FOMC rate decision on Wednesday afternoon. Thursday, we have the CPI, or Consumer Price Index, Empire Manufacturing, our usual jobless claims, the Philly Fed, and our usual nat gas inventories. On Friday, we have housing starts and building permits. Again, please join us for Tony's Market Club this coming Monday. Don't miss out on this fantastic opportunity to raise your trading knowledge and your trading profits. Until next week, keep green on your screen. I'm Tony Turner, and this is The Market Now.